Hi, I'm Carter, a proud Autistic Canadian from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Along with everyone at Autism Speaks Canada, I'm happy to present the second episode of Life on the Spectrum. In this 20-minute episode, we share lived experiences of Autistic Canadians and their families to increase understanding and acceptance of Autistic people. First, we start with a land acknowledgement and then visit our Autistic friends and their families across Canada. Join us on this journey to explore life on the spectrum, episode two. Thank you. I would like to begin by acknowledging I am on Treaty 6 territory, the traditional territory of Cree peoples, and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. Our first stop is Whitehorse, Yukon. Let's meet our friends Molly, Brandon, Daniel, and Diego. Molly is a swim instructor. She loves spending time with her family and friends. She is a strong advocate and is creating a personalized path to adulthood. Molly will introduce us to her friend, Brandon, who is also on the spectrum. Daniel and Diego are best friends. Daniel loves cars. Diego loves music. They celebrate each other's differences. Hi, I'm Molly. I live in Whitehorse, Yukon. I'm a lifeguard at the local pool. I am a full-time student. I live with my mom. I like the idea of this documentary and making autism like more awareness for it. And I wanted to help and be part of that. I've had support from my family. My mom especially, she was my voice for me when I didn't have one and I couldn't find mine and she taught me how to find mine. When she was little, she had a really hard time finding her words and speaking and communicating. And over the years with so much support, we've had amazing therapists. And I'm proud of Molly because so many kids left the school and her class and they'd go to the pool for swim lessons or they would go to soccer practice. And Molly had to work really hard with her speech path and for a long time, it felt like a lot of work. In the beginning, I was really scared for her and what her life would look like and if she'd be able to overcome certain challenges. Um, but she's the most amazing person. I've probably learned more about life. She just keeps going. I want to do a lot of traveling while I'm young. I want to see the world. I want to see what else is out there. I want to explore different cultures, different food, different places. I have such a big desire to see everything, and I really hope I can do that. After that, um, I want to settle down a bit, go to university, get my nursing degree, and one day get married and have a family. I've always wanted to be a mom. This is my boyfriend, Brendan. We've been together for almost three years. He's my shoulder to cry on, my rock when I really need him. Hello, I'm Brendan. I am a self-diagnosed autistic and I live in Whitehorse. Me and Molly needed to share our stories. We communicate to each other whenever something's on our minds, if we want to talk about something. Um, we're always open to conversation. I'm really proud of what I've made, this relationship that I have. Don't give up. I know it's hard sometimes. It's hard to find the light where all you see is darkness, but you gotta remember that there is always light in that darkness and there are people who care about you that will guide you to that light when you really need it. Daniel and we're in Whitehorse Yukon. My name is Diego and I live in the in Whitehorse Yukon. Diego. So tell us um, a little bit like someone's never met Diego before. Who's Diego? Um I mean I'm a guy that plays a lot of instruments. A talented musician. I'm a talented musician. Yes. Um I don't know. I kinda like when I'm when I'm doing something, like like when I'm trying to learn something. I kind of like am determined to learn it. Like when I gen genuinely want to learn like an instrument or something like flute or like piano, like I, I just like am really on it kind of or something. 
And I just like, I don't know, that's just how I am kind of. When I grow up, I want to be a, I don't know, music teacher. Something to do with music, I guess. Most of the genres I listen to are derived from electro house. Cool. Like, I listen to Big Room House, uh, Big Room Trance. Uh, I listen to uh, a new genre, uh, Drift Funk. Uh, How would you describe Diego? I would describe him as a talented musician, yes. He is quite funny. He gets the he gets the humor that I have too. Uh, I'm doing a, a small engines class. Uh, mechanics ten. Uh, power technology ten. I guess it's sort of like to fix anything that has an engine like uh, I also thought about uh, aviation technician and NASCAR technician. Thought about fixing motorbikes, just sort of anything with an engine. And people did bully me and my friends because some of my friends, like Diego, also have ADHD. And this is my friend. He's him. I accept him the way he is. It's because he has, it's because he has like all these diagnoses and like all this stuff with him. Like, does it make him less kind of like like he's still like a great person. Like, put yourself in that place. Put yourself in the place of what like what it would be like to be us. Kind of. We got through this interview with the power of friendship. Oh Let's my go. god. <laughs> <laughs> Now, we will go to beautiful St. John's in Newfoundland and Labrador to meet Andrew and his mom, Tiffany. Andrew has been on a wait list for a diagnosis since he was 12 months old. Research shows that early screening and timely intervention can improve development and future outcomes for autistic children. Autism can be reliably be diagnosed by age 2, but according to the Public Health of Canada, only 53% of children are diagnosed before the age of 5. Hi, my name is Tiffany. I'm from St. John's, Newfoundland. My oldest son, Andrew, he's 3. I will describe Andrew in three words by using loving, energetic, and kind. Well, I noticed a few things, um, so I brought them up to my public health nurse, um, such as like he was walking on his tippy toes, he wasn't looking at me or anyone um, when we said his name or tried to introduce or just normally speak with him. Um, and he was fixated on certain things that just seemed odd to me at the time and not knowing about too much about autism. I branched out to um, my public health nurse and decided to see what's actually happening. I wanted to spread awareness. Um, not a lot of people understand that each person is different and one person can make a difference in the world. He's a smart little guy. He gets into everything and wants to know how things work. The wait list is quite long. Um, I wish we had the support uh, before we got the diagnose. It's been over a year now and we're just about to see the doctor. Um, it's a long wait when you don't know how to really help. I wish there was more support and services before we actually seen uh, someone and gave a diagnosis. Some of Andrew's uh, strengths are that he's a right problem solver. He can solve anything. Um, he can't say it, but he can certainly get things put back together. Um, he loves puzzles. Um, he was doing a 24 piece puzzle since he was two and a half years old. The challenges are um, just getting what he wants known, known. He can't come out and say, you know, Mama want to drink. He'll have to point to his mouth or bring me to the fridge or point to a sign that we have up because it's taking a while for him to be able to say the words he needs. They don't have to be defined by it. It isn't a weakness. You have to make it a strength. It feels wonderful that 
I see him doing something that I would never think that I could do. Mm -hmm. um, it just makes me so happy and proud. And if we had support at this moment, I feel like we have more time to prepare for the future. There are approximately 500,000 working-age adults with autism or an intellectual disability. According to the Public Health of Canada, only 33% of autistic Canadians report being employed, compared to 79% of people without a disability. Social and economic inclusion for autistic people continues to be a priority. Let's meet sisters Kenza and Karima in Montreal, Quebec, as they share their different paths to employment success. Then, we will meet TJ and Blake with their mothers in Nova Scotia. Let's learn about their employment and housing experiences as they navigate their transition to adulthood. Euh, je m'appelle Kenza. Je m'appelle Karima. Oui, euh, moi, euh, c'est sûr que moi, je suis autiste Asperger et Karima est autiste avec une déficience intellectuelle, euh, avec une déficience intellectuelle et... Euh, C'est sûr, deux niveaux d'autonomie différents. En vieillissant, Karima devient autonome. Elle est de plus en plus autonome. Elle se déguidine. Puis moi aussi, je me déguidine. Elle, elle, elle fait des progrès pour devenir autonome. C'est sûr que d'une famille de deux autistes, de, avec j'ai grandi à Saint-Bert avec maman, mon père et Karima. C'est sûr que. C'est vraiment différent qu'une famille avec... Je, je ne connais pas qu'est-ce que c'est une famille avec des neurotypiques parce que j'ai jamais grandi là-dedans. Je fabrique des, des bijoux avec des pierres semi-précieuses et, euh, que, et, et en voici quelques-uns. Euh, je les vends souvent dans des marchés artisanaux et aussi dans des événements sur l'autisme. Euh, un de mes fiers accomplissements comme adulte, je dirais, c'est gagner le prix coup de chapeau à la Fédération de l'autisme en 2016. Et aussi, l'été dernier, en été 2022, cet été qui vient de passer, quand j'ai été exposée mes bijoux à la baie au lac Saint-Jean, ça, ça a été quelque chose qui m'a vraiment donné confiance en moi. Depuis mon expérience à la baie, des fois, je me cherche des endroits où aller, mais c'est sûr que quand je, il faut que j'arrête de dire que je préfère rester réaliste. Non, mais que je préfère ré rester réaliste, puis pour pas que les autres me disent que c'est pas réaliste, mes rêves. Oui, je fais la peinture, puis... Euh... Je fais de l'art, je fais de la couture, puis euh, je fais des dessins. Puis, si quelqu'un rencontre quelqu'un qui est autiste puis il veut développer une amitié, mais c'est quoi le meilleur avis que tu pourrais le donner? Avoir une amitié. Que c'est des bonnes personnes, que c'est des bonnes personnes qui sont attachantes, qui peuvent nous apporter beaucoup, que vous ne pouvez pas vous imaginer la joie que les personnes autistes peuvent vous apporter. J'ai eu beaucoup de thérapie. Après ça, c'est la transition à la vie adulte. Ça a quand même été difficile souvent de trouver un programme qui est adapté à mes besoins. C'est sûr que ce n'est pas le degré d'autisme qui définit l'autonomie, c'est des comportements adaptatifs, c'est ce que la personne est capable de faire. I'm Dorothy from Enfield, Nova Scotia, and I am TJ's mom. Currently, TJ is almost 25, which is very hard for me to believe. I would like people to know that if they've seen one autistic person, they've only seen one autistic person. If I had to describe TJ, it would be lovable. Funny, kind. TJ was actually diagnosed at 22 months old, which at that time was very unusual. So lucky that we did get a diagnosis that early. He got into early intervention. So they used to come out to the house and they worked with him before he went to school. You know, all of his grades going through was, were very good. Um, he graduated with all of his classmates that he had been with all along. And then he went back to his high school uh, for a couple more years. And then uh, he transitioned and moved into a small option home. Um, in TJ's case, his small option home um, has 24 hour awake staff. So it doesn't matter if TJ wakes up at 2 a.m. or if he wakes up at 5 a.m. Um, there's always somebody awake. There's always going to be somebody, you know, to help him to find out why he's awake in the middle of the night. Um, he lives in a home with uh, three other guys um, and uh, 
during the day they have three staff and then over the nighttime they have two staff. TJ moved into a small option home uh, just before his 20th birthday. So my husband Henry and I had always had a conversation that when TJ was unable to go to school anymore, which in Nova Scotia is 21, uh, that we would aim for him to move into a small option home at that time. So this would be his move from, you know, to move on, to learn how to do more things. All of those things that I would have done, but now they do it and I get to just enjoy TJ the way he is. He is doing amazing. My hope for TJ for the future is to continue uh, to grow the way he's growing and to learn all those skills that he needs as he gets older. It, for my case, TJ moved into the small option home and like I said, I get to be mom again. I'm not just a caregiver, I get to be mom again. For Acadia News, I'm Blake Priddle. Hi there, I'm Blake and I live in Port Hastings, Nova Scotia, which is just a stone's throw away from Port Hawkesbury. And I'm here with my parents and my two dogs and you'll be meeting them soon. Hi, I'm Blake's mom, Joe, and I'm here with Blake in his new home. Well, autism is different for everyone. There are some that are verbal like myself and others that aren't, but we all deserve to be treated with respect. I think that's uh, a really good rule to live by. I am a news reporter for a radio station in the area, but uh, I am a very creative person, I must say. I, uh, in my spare time, I like to write stories, paint pictures. I was first diagnosed at the age of six in uh, senior kindergarten, which exists in Ontario. But before that, I knew that I was different from other kids, as did my parents. So one of Blake's things that he did early on was um, to disclose, to disclose to his prospective employer in his cover letter, you know what, I have autism, yes I come with some quirks, uh, and maybe I need a few accommodations here and there, but I can bring to the table a ton of strengths. When I worked at the grocery store I used to have what I like to call my pocketbook, which was essentially a pilot's checklist of all of the stuff that I was supposed to do. That's how I got into the routine of things. Well, it started off in grade eight when my mom got me involved with a employment support program that helped people with autism to uh, prepare for the workforce. But that really taught me about responsibility. It taught me about how to deal with customers and it uh, prepared me for the workforce. I worked part-time at a local radio station. So that uh, was a stepping stone in my career to becoming a radio personality and a journalist. What advice would you give somebody who relates to your story? You're gonna do just fine. Just believe in yourself and don't give up. And don't be afraid to fail because you know what fail stands for? First attempt in learning. Thank you for watching Life on the Spectrum by Autism Speaks Canada. I hope you enjoyed meeting Molly, Brandon, Daniel, Diego, Andrew, Kinza, Karima, TJ, and Blake. We remain committed to sharing authentic stories of autistic Canadians coast to coast to coast. Help us create an inclusive Canada where autistic people can reach their full potential. Donate today at autismspeaks.ca slash donate.